And the other thing is these watches are not always that accurate. So yeah. again, I was about to say, <laughs> Angela's about to say, ditch your watch. <laughs> I didn't say it, but yes. I mean, the pool, use the clock. That's, that's mm-hmm. so consistent and easy to do. And then open water, if you're going to use the same watch and, you know, getting your GPS, compare swims outside to outside swims. Welcome to the I Race Like a Girl podcast, where a professional triathlete and an age grouper talk all things sport and life. We are here to educate and enlighten, but most importantly, to keep it real. We are your hosts, Amy Woods and Angela Nate. Let's race to it. Hi, everyone. We are getting back to basics for this podcast, and we have a great swim Q&A for you all. Swimming is all about form. Sure, we all want to be faster in the water, but one of the main goals for us triathletes is to become as efficient as possible so we can get out of the water with the least amount of fatigue. In this episode, we touch on everything from how to pick the right drill for you, Angela's go-to drills, how I fixed my body position, and what I really think of flip turns. We cover so much in here. Have a listen. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the I Race Like a Girl podcast. We are starting a three-part series, kind of back to basics, swim, bike, run, as we all start to gear up for our races. Our training is ramping up. We might, a lot of us might be coming out of our base phase. Um, So we have uh, our first coach Q&A swim, and we're going to start to answer some questions about the swim and get us a little more focused on some of the finer details. So you ready? Ready. All right, let's do it. We're going to start with a a big question that for most of us age groupers and also uh, elite triathletes goes through our minds from one of our teammates. She asks, can an adult onset swimmer ever hope to be a front pack swimmer with those that are actual swimmers? And I mean, actual swimmers, I'm assuming the people that like did swim team, you know, in high school um, and have been swimming since they were little. So basically the big global question which many of us wonder as we like do lap upon lap and drill upon <laughs> drill is, is this going to make me faster or is this just like where I am? Do you reach a certain mm-hmm. plateau? So what do you think about that? Well, I think it's a, a big question. Quite honestly, there's the, my response to that originally was like, does the Sid swimmer believe that she, <laughs> she could? Because quite honestly, yeah. it's a mental aspect too. I mean, just like anything in sport, if you believe you can do something, that's like the first and foremost thing that you need ingrained in your head, or at mm-hmm. least some type of confidence or faith that you can do that. Right. Um, if you don't think you can, you never will. I mean, you just won't because it, it's just the nature of the body and the mind. So that's the first thing. Um, and the other thing is, I mean, I guess you need to look at where you are in general, comparatively to the very front pack. Right. And so let's say there's, I don't know, like just use a hundred, hundred women in your age group. No, but I'm, I'm saying like, like, like time, time gaps, like the first ones out are like 15 minutes ahead or five minutes or, right. I mean, there's a big determining factor. So I'm not one to like balk at anything, but I also think you just need to look at where you are right now and where you could be Mm -hmm. or where you want to be. I mean, there's so many factors, like, like, how do you currently swim? How many, how many times a week do you swim? That, that makes a massive difference. If there's something atrocious about your stroke that you can easily fix, I mean, that's going to change things. Um, If you're kind of a mediocre swimmer, you're swimming well, um, can you make that front pack? I mean, that's, that's the biggest question for me. <laughs> I mean, I, I've been doing this sport for, I don't know how many years and I'm still pretty much almost the same speed. So for me, I, it's a big question for me too, Yeah, yeah. but it's why I started working with a coach just like a couple months ago or maybe a month ago or so to mm-hmm. see if there's any little thing that I can try to fix in my stroke. And there is, I mean, I found that there was a lot that I could look at. So, yeah. Well, and that's, I think something that we all have to remember. And I use you as an example of that when people, my own athletes talk about their swim and I'm like, look, like you're never finished trying to improve in one of your three sports. Your swim. I was like, Angela has a swim coach right now because she's trying to make those marginal gains 
and latch onto the front pack and just find or the like, second pack. Or the I, second I'd pack. be very happy with second pack. I mean, how many <laughs> minutes realistically are you trying to find in the Ironman swim? Do you um, know? I don't necessarily know, mm-hmm. but like I, I, you know, there's there's a ten minute gap between the very top end swimmers and myself. Yeah, yeah that's sometimes, a, that's which massive. is a lot that's to massive. gain. So if I can lo- if I can get even five minutes, you know, it yeah. changes the whole perspective of the bike. Yeah. Because when you're with a group in the bike, even though it's not drafting, um, there's a significant difference than riding 112 miles alone. So mm-hmm. it's uh, that's yeah. my goal is at least to see if I can shave off some minutes and, and get closer to the front end. So does said athlete believe she can do that? Yes. <laughs> said athlete does. <laughs> So I think, you know, I am of the belief I, I am an adult. I think I can go to the Olympics and swimming. That's right. You know what? Dream big though. Dream big. I, I believe in you too. I believe in you. But fly. Hundred fly. <laughs> That's next goal. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm an adult onset swimmer. I have made big gains, but I am now taking um, some lessons too. And I'm seeing some little improvements, like trying to really get that elbow from dropping, um, I do some things pretty well. One thing that I will say is you talked about like if there's something atrocious in your swim mm-hmm. and like the first thing that was popping in my mind was your body position. And mm-hmm. I know we wear wetsuits most of the time, but if your legs are dragging and your core is not engaged, your butt's not up, no matter how much you swim, exactly, <laughs> you're st- it, yeah. it's still going to be hard. So I actually fixed that because of you last year, which when we get into drills, I'll talk about how you helped me do that. Um, and that helped tremendously. So for me, as much, I don't, I, I believe I can get faster. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can make the big leap to the front of the pack Mm -hmm. in my age group at all. I think I, if I could get like top 20%, I don't even know. Actually, to be honest, I haven't done any of the percentages. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, I I don't know. It's, there's something to be said about, being realistic, like you said, mm-hmm. about your goals mm-hmm. and knowing too that if the gap is like five minutes and a 70.3 between you and the front pack swimmer, but you are a much stronger biker and runner than that front pack, than that person who the few people who are leading, like it, I'm not sure if it's like six and one half dozen the other, if you're going to expend so much energy you know, that's, that's where like the math comes in and, and that's where you have to do Mm -hmm. a little bit of like, remember that triathlon is three disciplines and it's not just one. And I think what you have to look at too is, is time, because in order to make improvements in the swim, you have to swim a lot. And a lot of age groupers and, and, um, people racing are maybe only swimming like well, I hope a minimum of two times a week, Mm -hmm. but even to make any type of significant games gains, you want at least three times a week in my books. And, you know, a lot of, if you have to balance that with your bike and run and your family and and Mm -hmm. work and all that, I mean, it's really hard. So then what you do is you look at the perspective of the race, the time in the water, let's say for an Ironman, I'm just going to use standard times, but let's say it's an hour Mm -hmm. and then the bikes, you know, five hours and the runs three to four hours. So looking at even just the hours of, of time frame, mm-hmm. that five minutes in the swim, if you're going to swim, say, five days a week or six days a week, is it really going to make a big difference in your entire race? So instead of spending, you know, two or three more times in the pool, kind of accept where you are, maybe work on stroke drills and, and stuff and try to get as if efficient as possible, mm-hmm. but put that time into bike and run because that's where your bang is like, or, Back, back for your back, <laughs> back for your bag. I tend to <laughs> twist my words a lot. I also but. loved how you use your times: the one hour, five hour, and three well, hour. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> no, just I know. saying, like, no. like if you looked at that perspective, no, I know. it's and, like you're so mm-hmm. much better off putting more time running and biking. Well, and I was just listening to a podcast with the coach Jim Vance, who's very mm-hmm. famous, and he has an up and coming um, pro triathlete who her weak discipline is swimming. And she's in the pool six days a week. Now, mm-hmm. of course, it, I don't know if she has another job or if she's just focusing on that sport. And so, and that, and he said, sometimes she's swimming twice a day mm-hmm. to make those gains. Yeah, there's, there's, there's different perspectives. So a lot of times, <clears throat> especially as pros, sometimes we do banked stuff. So mm-hmm. like two months of really solid swim work. So I've, I mean, I've done that in the past in the winters where I've done t- 
two days and swimming seven days a week, like quite honestly, um, for a lot of the times and then balancing that out and then doing it for bike and run. Um, Mm -hmm. and sometimes when you do put a lot of effort and time into something, things click Mm -hmm. and that's the hope. And, but I think with that perspective, you really want to have some guidance and you also want to have hands on or eyes on at least so that you can slowly change and correct things as you get faster. But there's no doubt the more time you can spend in the water, I think the faster you're going to be. It's all about feel. It's all about body position. And um, I mean, you, I mean, that's why kids are that start swimming when they're super young and then they're adults. I mean, they just have a natural feel for the water and it just comes from being in the water all the time. Yeah, I know it does. But the more you swim, we were just talking about this, mm-hmm. the more feel you get for the water. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So now let's talk about getting that feel for the water. And let's go into what people really want to know in terms of drills. And we had a bunch of questions about drills um, in different formats, like different ways to look at them. But one of the more interesting ones, uh, Lindsay says, I feel like drills can be good if a coach is watching you and can see what drills will benefit you and then is able able to make sure you do the drills properly. So outside of this, is there any benefit from just anyone picking and doing any old drill? So let's talk about how you choose the drills for your athletes or Mm -hmm. even for you um, Mm -hmm. and what you decide, how you decide to do that and to make sure you're doing it right. Um, Well, for my athletes, I try to get them to give me some video Uh, just on their iPhone, have someone follow them, get them front end, side end, and then just looking at their stroke, give them three drills from what I see. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing with myself. I ask the lifeguards to take video of me, like, hey, can you take video of me? Um, And then I kind of look at things, and then I also am working with someone as well. But there are some drills that I always go back to because they really, I find, really help people feel for the water. Um, And so just to answer that question, I think it just depends – how atrocious you're swimming is. <laughs> um, so because yes, today. yes, you're like, you're not going to make gains if you're doing a drill wrong, but I think it really first and foremost, you need to look at body position. 100%. Yeah. And there's, there's drills for that, you know? So I, I think having an, having an initial evaluation or some type of eye on you, mm-hmm. giving you some drills and then continuing that is, is probably the best way. So I would say drills are very helpful because it does help feel for the water. But again, you need some type of baseline first. Yeah. And before we go into like specific drills for specific issues, I watch so many like YouTube and Instagram reel videos. Well, that's how you get faster. And that, yeah, it is. <laughs> you just you watch. Know, you, I watch it and I visualize it and then that's my me. body makes it so. <laughs> yeah. But I watch so much stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so either I can pick up a new drill for me, I'll try it. I might give it to my athletes. Um, we talked, we interviewed Brenton Ford on here from effortless swimming. He has a really nice, um, Instagram account Mm -hmm. where he'll look at age groupers, they'll send videos and he'll show things. And, you know, in a classroom as a classroom teacher, you can say things one way and one student gets it and you can say things another way and another student gets it. So I follow Mm -hmm. a lot of different people. I ask for a lot of different opinions because you never know the way somebody's going to describe it to you or something's going to click. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember a couple of years ago, he had a video on head position that I just, and I'm always working on my head position cause I forget about it, but, uh, it was right before I injured my foot. And I, all I did in that whole swim was think about head position and the cues he gave. And I can't remember what it was. It was something <laughs> about like relaxing into it, which I, I have to relax more when I swim <laughs> And I felt it that day. I felt the water. (laughs) Like I was like, I feel so smooth. And all I did was focus on head position. Yeah. There's, there's a time I swear every time I swim, like when I first get in, I feel like I, I I don't feel the water, but Mm -hmm. there's every single time I swim, there's a point in my swim Mm -hmm. where I just like, it clicks, like something clicks and I can feel what I want to feel. And I think that's what you have to constantly try to find is that, Mm -hmm. is that smooth feel where you just you know, you're doing it, right? You know, you're doing it. It feels, and that's why it feels like effortless, which I don't mean to like take his word, word, but it is true. Efficient, Mm -hmm. um, which is what we're going for. All right. So let's focus on what we both think is at least the number one thing for newbies, for anybody 
let's talk about the body position, especially mm-hmm. just with the sinky legs. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, you know, the thing is like, oh, well, we're going to be swimming a lot in a wetsuit and it helps pop your legs up. Well, your legs still might sink. And also so many races now are not wetsuit legal because things and, are getting warm. And still, if you have a better body yes. position in a wetsuit, yes. you're going to swim faster. So, so sinky, let's just start with like the sinky legs. Um, and, and I'm going to share the drill. I had some sinky legs and you did a drill with me. I want, I think we did it one time because I have a pretty strong core. I'm so modest. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got a six pack. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm strong core, but I couldn't figure out how to get like my button heels up and it wasn't because of core strength, but you put a band around my ankles, which I absolutely do not love, but it's so <laughs> hard. You band swim like a beast, but, um, and then you put fins on me mm-hmm. and then all you had to me do was swim mm-hmm. and I and I've done that with the buoy before, but it was the fins on the feet that made all of a sudden it made my whole core engage and it got my butt up mm-hmm. and then I took it off and there it was. It was wild. Yeah, it's, it's funny. If if you put flippers on your feet, it gives some type of little flotation mm-hmm. device. It extends your legs out. And so then you tie them together because ideally the body position you want is you want your head, your butt, and your and your heels at the surface of the water Mm -hmm. as you're swimming Mm -hmm. like that's that's ideal um it's a lot of people have stinky legs so so giving the feet a little bit of buoyancy putting them together so that they're not flailing yeah (laughs) and then just trying to swim and get that feel of feeling like you're swimming downhill and what and what that means is like you have this buoyancy part in your body and it's really kind of like chest level and um a lot of people have it at at their waist level and so everything sinks so you so you have to feel like your buoyancy is coming from your chest so it feels really really awkward because we're not people that live in the water and Mm -hmm. so we're always upright so feeling like we're gonna fall downward is not a good feeling for Mm -hmm. us but that's the feeling you want in water to make it feel like you feel like you're swimming downhill but you're actually like very very neutral Mm -hmm. so the flippers help a ton and it's 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 surprisingly one of the easiest things to kind of catch on to as soon as you feel it and then and then take all that stuff off which you did yeah freaking worked so that was that so it's a really cool drill the band and the um the uh just put flippers on (sighs) tie your ankles together basically and just try a couple hundred Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. um it helps. All right. What's another body position drill you really like? Um, body position. I like, I like kicking on your side and breathing because, um, that kind of teaches you your buoyancy as well. Cause you want it more into your armpit. And so again, upper chest. Mm-hmm. So making sure that that's all strong. A lot of the times, if you do that with flippers, it helps because you can get that, that, that body position as well. One I like that a lot of people don't like is putting your hands down by your waist and kicking with your head forward and you're you're kind of like torpedoing forward, but your hands are by your side. <laughs> He's like, no. I'm looking at her because she can really do it. Yeah, and then and then you take a breath up or take take mm-hmm. it to the side and you can feel your body and your chest going up and down and, and you get to this point where you find that buoyancy point where you feel like your butt's out of the water, your heels are are out of the water and that's what you're trying to find at every stroke and so it's a easy way to teach it but a lot of people have a lot of trouble with it and if you do that means i mean that's what you need to work on is mm-hmm. body position okay so the next part of body position that we want to talk about and give a good couple drills are the rotation because mm-hmm. many of us adult onset swimmers swim pretty flat adult I'm sorry. I always have to make jokes. Adult onset swimmers <laughs> sounds terrible. It does. What is that like? Adult onset sounds like a disease. Yes, adult onset disease or something. Adult onset swimmers. All right, many people who came into swimming late. In- All right, we just tend to swim flat, uh, yeah. and so um, oh yeah, me too. And, I'm you know them. yeah, and you wanna yeah, you've been working on that. Yes, and so the rotation is one of the biggest components of body position as mm-hmm. well because. If you can get yourself to the side, to side, to side, to side, you're going to go faster. Um, I'm a notorious flat swimmer. Mm-hmm. And so I, te- I tend to have very straight arms because that's the only way to yeah. swim when you're flat swimming. So I'm working with a new coach, trying to get that rotation a lot more. And it's, fu- it's, it's, it's very 
interesting because you think you're rotating, yeah. but you're not. No. And so you almost have to over rotate to feel how much to rotate. And it comes from the hips. It comes from the sh- shoulder connection. So you want that all connected together. Um, and it's a constant thing that I have to keep working on for sure. And so what a really good drill I like is just sidekick, mm-hmm. like I talked about before. And then also sidekick, take three strokes and go to the other side. So six, three, six, um, is kind of a lot of the times mm-hmm. what, what it's called. Um, I like uh, fingertip drag mm-hmm. because that actually creates a rotation because you have to yes. rotate to get your fingers toward and fi- and fingertip drag is basically dragging your fingertips along the water along the side of your body in recovery um, and then into the entry. Yeah, I was just doing that uh, with our coach. And I can do it better on one side than on the other. And that is helping with the rotation. And also, it also helps me relax my hand when mm-hmm. I come out of the mm-hmm. water where you're not supposed to be putting a lot of effort into that recovery and saving it for under the water. Um, and then the other thing that you could have somebody do is have somebody, when we talk about videotape, have somebody videotape you, especially from like so if you can get them swimming like from the back to see how Mm -hmm. much you're snaking because you want to make sure with your body position and your rotation that you're nice and you know straight and you're not kind of you know uh what I want to say legs are swaying out and then your whole body's kind of like fishtailing thank you fishtailing um because you know they talk about kind of being on that like metal skewer and really engaging that whole core and because the straighter you are and like the more you can knife through the water, um, mm-hmm. the faster you're going to be. And you'll see if your kick, which we haven't even talked about yet, is like coming out too for balance. So you're going to see if you're compensating with your kick to help you balance, which we see sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ideally, if you find a kick that has like a big kick and then small kicks and then a big wide kick, mm-hmm. your balance is off. And so again, if you t- uh, get your feet together with those flippers, that really, really helps. One cue that I like to tell people is to hit their big toes. Mm-hmm. I, I think I said that to you, right? Yeah, but it works. Yeah, it, it does work because it, it cues you to keep your mm-hmm. feet together. And then you have to almost force yourself to find your body alignment because you're keeping your feet together. Yeah, I I have worked on, I have a pretty, a pretty small kick now. And when I'm in the endless pool, I will scare myself sometimes because my big toes will oh. touch. And I think <laughs> something is back there. I'm totally by myself and I have popped up. Um, there are so many different cues for all this, like, or mm-hmm. visualization techniques, like kicking in a bucket, things like that. Um, whatever works for you. And remember that, I mean, how many different swim coaches have you had? Um, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and so, and every swim coach is Head, going, oh, it's it's very gonna, different. is very different. It doesn't mean it's wrong. Uh, but they, everybody just has different approaches, you know, favorite drills they do, mm-hmm. things like that. So you take all of this knowledge and then you figure out what works for me, what clicks for me, because everybody approaches it differently. All right. So let's move on. We, we talked about the legs. We've talked about rotation, um, keeping the core tight. So let's now talk about head position because we did that clinic a couple, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we saw head positions all over the place, some Mm -hmm. out of the water, some under the water. (laughs) I tend to get under the water a little Mm -hmm. bit in the pool, but not as much in open water. Mm -hmm. Um, so what is your cue or drill for head position? Um, I like to just have the, the water, um, on your forehead basically. Mm -hmm. So you're slightly looking up and you feel the water on your forehead. Um, that's the easiest cue. Mm-hmm. Um, and looking not right down below because your chin's going to mm-hmm. drop, looking a little bit ahead, 45 degrees. And then when you turn to breathe, that one goggle out of the water, one goggle. And the drill I just did two weeks ago, our swim coach had me do, is I breathe mainly to my right side. So he had me close my right eye. Mm-hmm. and swim and he said all I want you to see is underwater <laughs> and it it was cool and yeah. it worked so I had to swim I was like Papa, I had to swim <laughs> like one eye and that's a really cool drill to do in the pool where you close the eye 
of your breathe if you breathe on one side, breathing side, um, the eye out of the water. And so that's that's to see if you're because if you can see all the way out of the pool, then obviously you're rotating, you're, you're rotating your yeah. head too much, which is going to definitely slow you down. Um, and this is pool. We'll move in. We can move into open water later, or we can do a whole open water podcast mm-hmm. later. Um, okay, let's now move on to where most of your your power comes from, and what we, I have been spending months trying to work <laughs> on is the catch and the pull and the finish, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, kind of what's going on under the water, which is honestly, for me, the hardest thing to perfect, because you can get all sorts of video, you got above the water, but it's, you've got to get eyes on your stroke, and you have to have video under the water. Because I just Mm -hmm. like, I'm like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And then Mm -hmm. somebody films me, and it's like, I am not doing it. (laughs) So let's give like three, your best three drills that you would give to somebody to help get that catch that pull. What do you think? Well, <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of components to all that, yeah, but I know, I, <laughs> I know. it's hard if to we were to it look at catch. I really like fist drill. So putting your hands in fists and swimming like that, because it really teaches you a high elbow because you don't have your hands to kind of finagle things. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to learn how to use your forearm and your, and your elbows are nice and high when you do that. Primarily. Um, I like that for catch. Um, I do like some sculling sometimes. So doing that with a pull boy uh, or just kicking and hands in front, hands on the side, trying to feel Mm -hmm. the water. Um, In terms of the the pull, um, a lot of it's cues, but I I actually, um, I've been working with this coach doing fingertip drill. So what I like about that is when you do the fingertip drill on top, you're elbow is nice and bent on top and it's almost like you mirror yourself Mm -hmm. on the underneath and so I find that it's a lot easier to feel that catch when you're doing the fingertip Mm -hmm. drill because your body's just automatically um, aligning itself Mm -hmm. Um, so I like that Um, another cue I just like to do to think about is lead with your elbows Mm -hmm. so don't like forget about your forearm and your hands and literally think and imagine you just are swimming with your elbows Mm -hmm. And that's how you get that nice high, high elbow and catch. Um, Yeah, that's actually what I was going to say, because you've been telling me to lead with my elbows. And Mm -hmm. it's funny because you've been telling me that. And I'm like, I know, I know my elbows are still dropping. And then at the swim lesson this week, he said, pretend there's a hand on your elbow and that like this, the forearm and hand, my Mm -hmm. hand don't exist. And he's like, pretend there's a hand on your elbow and swim with your elbow, Mm -hmm. like swim with it. And so... I put it in and immediately became like faster Mm -hmm. and like I got my, and I just had a better catch. I had that beautiful, as Brenton Ford would say, I had that power diamond position. I came in and my hand was kind of like coming down my mid chest line. And then I was like swimming with my elbows Mm -hmm. and that really, really helped. So I was going (laughs) to, that cue... Like it's a funny how like mm-hmm. I was trying to tell you that, but yeah. the cue of the hand is the what, hand on what the got elbow. you, which actually is quite genius. Yeah, yeah I know. And that's the thing. You just got to keep, you don't know what's going to help. And that's why I think it's, it. that's a good point is go to different coaches because again, they, they explain things always a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I had a swim coach in Boulder, Colorado when I was there. And we used all sorts of things like um, seashells and yeah. <laughs> I mean, just weird things. But it was really interesting because it made you feel the water differently. The way that she talks about the water is way, way different than than who I'm working with now. Do, so. you, do you remember when we went to Lake Placid and you had me hold two rocks? Yes. And yep. you tried to have me swim at the rocks and I almost drowned. <laughs> Good times, good times. Yeah. I think I could do that now, though. <laughs> Maybe I just wasn't ready for that one. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk about as part of the the catch and the hand entry, really, <clears> is <throat> what I've been seeing a lot of from our clinics and some of our athletes, or my athletes at least, is you come in, you put your hand in, and then people break themselves. Mm-hmm. So they kind of scoop their hand up. Imagine mm-hmm. just like holding up like you're telling somebody to stop. Now, of course, their wrist isn't completely up. So instead of having the fingertips below their wrist, they kind of come in and swoop up. Mm-hmm. And and so you're breaking themselves before they start that 
catch and pull. So when we think about hand entry coming in, and that's where you always talked about being a little more aggressive when you're entering the water. Mm -hmm. So you're not just kind of like plopping your hand in and giving it time to swoop up. So yeah, you kind of want to put the force down toward Mm -hmm. the water. So you're so a really good drill is fingertip drag. And then just as it passes your head, you want to dive your like a torpedo dive your hand Mm -hmm. downwards versus upwards. And it's a really weird feeling again, because we think that we need it to be going upwards to go forward. But you actually want to have an angle that's like, almost like six to eight inches below the water is 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 the angle you want your hand to go in and your arm. And so that will teach you like the fingertip drag, enter and going down toward the bottom of the pool almost and forward that will teach you not to do that kind of like upward swoop right and maybe and also um i tend to glide more on my right side than my mm-hmm. left and the co- our coach right now is working on actually having me glide less on my right because i'm not i'm gliding for like half of the stroke and a mm-hmm. glide is good mm-hmm. but i need to start the pull mm-hmm. so and and the glide drills that we do like six ones like, like those are awesome but you want to come in, have a little bit of a glide and then just, and then get going, yeah. especially as we think about transitioning to open water um, and maybe having a little bit of a higher turnover, depending on the conditions um, for open water. Yeah. But I always like to think about like, I need to learn how to swim efficiently and smoothly in the pool. Mm-hmm. And then, so when I take it to open water, I still keep that. And then we can adjust for, you know, people around you in a race <laughs> and, and doing some accelerations or getting around a buoy and sighting and things like that. So I, I, I have a yeah. question for you. So okay. what do you think about flip turns? Oh my gosh. You know what I think about I flip turns. <laughs> All right. So here's what I think about flip turns. <laughs> here's what I think. All right. I think if you can do a flip turn in the pool, you should absolutely do it. <laughs> Because it's she's choking on her drink. Yeah. Um, because it obviously it makes you it gives you the rhythm. So you go do your flip turn. It's part of the rhythm of the swim. Um, I have spent a lot of time doing a flip, trying to learn flip turns, but not enough time. And so for me, I touch the wall and I turn and I push off. I'm losing time in the pool. But I don't really care because I'm not going to do a pool swim meet. Why Why do you not want to learn flip turns? Because I keep trying and then I get like a little dizzy. I can, You know when I can do a flip turn? Put a buoy and paddles on me and I can flip turn because mm-hmm. you have the momentum and I've got the paddles to help. Mm-hmm. For me, I just don't know if I want to spend the time doing flip, learning flip turns. But I do think that if... I did, it would probably, it would, my times would go down in the pool. Like I would look like a better pool swimmer, (laughs) but I don't know if I want to put the effort into it to make me a better pool swimmer because I don't flip turn. I'm going to say that learning how to do a flip turn is going to make you a better open water swimmer too. Do you think so? Why? Yes, for a few reasons. So every time you get to the wall Mm -hmm. and you're doing a stop and go basically turn, you Mm -hmm. you have to reset yourself every time Mm -hmm. you're swimming and refind yourself. And there's no continuity. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing a flip turn, you you flip over and yes, you get a pause because you obviously have to flip over, but you're also teaching yourself body position. Every time you're flipping over, you have to get into an alignment and, and push off and really find your body position that way, which is a lot easier and smoother because you already have the momentum. So each time you're doing that, it's like you're resetting yourself, which is fine in some sense for learning. But I just think the continuity of the flip turn is is massive. The other thing is a lot of the times when people just touch and go, you can get a lot of um, uh, hip issues or something like that because you're always going to one side. Mm -hmm. And you are really trying like you have to stop yourself. You have to push yourself off. Mm -hmm. Whereas a flip turn, again, you can flip over. If you're doing it right, you're flipping on your back, you're going straight out. So it's a lot, a lot easier on the body than, than stop and go and rotating your body each time. Um, so that's one of the benefits, I think, um, actually two of the benefits. And quite honestly, flip turns are not hard to do if you just take a little bit of time. I know. I can, I, I, can, I can physically do a flip turn. Sometimes I get water at my nose. Sometimes I forget that I'm going to flip turn and then I get to the wall and I'm like, oh. Um, so I, I agree with you on all of that. Um, and I was 
on my way to thinking about doing flip turns last year. And then I couldn't push off the pool at all for like six mm. months last year. So I lost it. So uh, you and then my coach also wants me to do flip turns. Uh, so I will work on it. And then <laughs> I will go to open water. Even if you just take like five minutes at the end mm-hmm. of your swim. Yeah. And just practice. Yeah. I mean, that's the best way to do it is a little bit at a time. And, mm-hmm. and a good way to do it actually is you're swimming and go and swim a length and like halfway in the length, do a somersault and, Mm -hmm. and see where you land and you should face the other side. I Mm -hmm. I mean, face the same way. And then once you learn that somersault feel, then Mm -hmm. you can get toward the wall. um, Yeah, no, I can actually do them. It's just like, I just forget. What if I told you that I do streamline off the wall if I open turn, (laughs) but you're, every time you're doing that open turn, it's, Mm -hmm. it's fine. But like you're, you're torquing, I know. Your back, my back, you're torquing I know, your whole I body each I know. time. I know, and I'm actually curious. We can oh, this up, but I'm no. curious which side you you turn on each time. Oh yeah, because of my back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad our swim Q and A has turned into a let's make sure Amy flip turns. But I'm here for it because this is real life, <clears> and <throat> I am gonna flip turn this week. And get a lot of water at my nose while I learn it. <laughs> okay, so I know that there are people out here who out listening who are like, oh, I flip turn every time. And then there are people, you are my people, who are like me and are like, ugh. <laughs> so let's go and move on. Um, we have another question that is kind of for newbies. Uh, how difficult is it to go from pool breathing and not needing to sight versus open water, breathing and sighting? And what are some tips and techniques? Um, well, I don't, it's hard to answer how difficult that is because mm-hmm. everyone's different. So Correct. it just depends. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess the word in the question is a little odd, uh, but it is, um, I think it's just a matter of practice and learning how to do it. And so what you can do is start in the pool and try to halfway through the pool, lift your head and try to look at something that's on deck and just practice that first and see if you can get that type of rhythm. Mm -hmm. Um, Once you, once you can kind of learn it, it's, it's not hard. It's just kind of maintaining your body position Mm -hmm. and lifting your head up to sight. You don't want to lift your head up too high because that will cause your entire body to sink. So Practicing it in the pool is actually probably one of the best things to do is where you just take a few strokes and look at something on deck that you always want to try to f- focus on every time you lift your head. Um, one one way that I really like to do it is I like to, to uh, li- lift my head in sight and then rotate to the side to breathe. Yep. Uh, that's my favorite way to do it. Um, I know some people breathe first and then sight, but yeah. I find that a lot of people when they do that, if they're beginners it or even just over time like it makes your body sink a lot more Mm -hmm. yeah Um, I sight then breathe sight then breathe yeah um and I mean ideally it it can be four to six strokes but if you're a pretty straight swimmer and you know where you're going you don't have to I just kind of look every now and then I never found it I never found it hard to go from swimming in a pool to swimming open water and sighting it becomes very natural but I know when you go to the pond, sometimes you don't sight at all. You just, I mean, I mean, obviously it's not a race. Sometimes you yeah. just go, you're a very straight swimmer, but you're also sometimes. looking, <laughs> but you're also looking at the shore. You can see the shoreline. Yeah. So, so I use the mm-hmm. shoreline a lot mm-hmm. when I swim. Um, cause I just follow the shoreline, but mm-hmm. I mean, in, in races, you want to look at buoys, um, or people's feet. I mean, if you can align yourself behind someone or follow the bubbles i mean that's massive so yeah, you don't if, really have to sight as much if you make sure you followed somebody <laughs> who knows where they're going in general though i think yeah the amount of people that are in the water if you just kind of follow the bobbing heads <laughs> yeah that's true that's true so i didn't find it and i didn't find it super difficult to transition but practicing in the pool just you know mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. is really um, nice so actually let's talk about that drafting we have a, we actually do have a drafting question. So especially when you're a newbie, sometimes the open water strategy is to stay away from people. You're like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to line up all the way over mm-hmm. here. But 
then when you've done a couple tries, you're like, well, maybe I should take advantage of drafting. Um, but this person says, I don't really know what drafting means. Like, where do you mm. need to be in relation to a swimmer? Because obviously in the bike, you know, you, we want like, drafting is behind yeah. somebody, but that's not always the most efficient place in open water. So mm -hmm. talk to us about where you want to be in drafting. So, I mean, you can draft to the side of someone mm -hmm. right beside their hips. If you, if you want to get really close to someone, I find that sometimes pretty difficult to do because yeah. you have to be in rhythm with their stroke okay. as well. So you don't hit each other. Um, so a lot of the times I just, I, I am behind a person's feet. Mm -hmm. And so you basically just want to be as close as possible to the feet without touching them. Mm -hmm. That's the best place. So, and it's very difficult sometimes uh, to continue that. Um, but that's, that's, that's ideal. Depending on where the current is, uh, you want to stay, I mean, just like a bike, if if the current is coming to the left, you want to stay to the right of the person slightly, same as on a bike. Um, and then the opposing side, if, if the current is coming from the right, you want to stay to the left. Um, and that along the lines, like if the current or the winds are coming from that same side, you're, you're typically having a lot of waves or, or, um, choppy water. So you want to stay to the opposite side of that person. And that, and so they break kind of, or they create like a barrier from those big waves and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that really, really helps. Um, you know, I think yeah. the hardest part, especially for age groupers, is you don't know the people you're lining up around. So mm -hmm. you're not quite sure of the speed. And when you're drafting somebody, you're working a little bit less. So you're like, am I going fast enough? Well, I think at that point, I mean, that happens to me a lot of the times too, is I get behind someone's feet and I feel, oh, this is so much easier. So what I do is if I feel like I am going too easy, I just get out of the draft and try to swim on mm -hmm. my own. And a lot of the times... I'm swimming the same speed as if I was on my own, mm -hmm. but it's so much easier behind them. So I start swimming side by side. And I'm like, why am I expending all this energy? Yeah. I'm not getting any, anywhere any faster. So I end up going behind their feet again. Mm -hmm. And if you're in like a small, if you're in a race that's in like a smaller pond or lake and maybe not have a wide open ocean, like there's going to be a nice little current going. If, if you yes. have a lot of people, you're going to be a little bit faster anyway because yeah. you're going to get this. It's almost this little funnel tunnel well, thing. <laughs> it's funny you say that because one of the, the the biggest races that happens is Lake Placid. Mm -hmm. It's a two loop. Well, and you'll be doing it. It's two loops. And you have like 2,000 people doing this like circle. Washing machine. <laughs> yeah, washing and it's machine. not a big lake. No. And so Clear you lake, literally no. have this current going around. I you. cannot it's crazy. wait. Because. But it's also. What? chaotic <laughs> okay she's trying not to scare me she was about to say I, but after florida 70.3 with that m-shaped swim yeah. i got punched and kicked so much um but also and so if you one of the best ways to get to try drafting is just to have a friend like go into a pond or a lake with you get into open mm -hmm. water and take turns drafting, take turns being off somebody's mm -hmm. hip. If you want, have them hit your feet, you know what it feels like, and just be next to them, have somebody be in between two swimmers, have your friend sandwich you and, you know, burst ahead, fall back and do all these fun little things that you're going to experience in a race. If you have some anxiety about that in the race, mm -hmm. um, I used to have anxiety. And like I just talked about that Florida 70.3, I went into that race knowing the swim was going to be extremely chaotic because it's an M shape. And I just battled my way through it. I was like, <laughs> let's go, you know, and I was just getting pushed and knocked. And I was like, all right, well, that's what it is. And so I didn't freak out. But um, and you can just practice that. You can even practice that in a pool, even if you're circle swimming. Yeah. I mean, that's a good way to do it, too. So try it. Um, but it's also okay to go it alone. All right, we have, let's do two more questions. Um, let's talk about, since we're talking about open water a little bit, mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the difference between pool pacing and open water um, pacing for the same distance in terms of like, so let's say you do a 500 in the pool and your pace is 145 per hundred, and then you go on open water and you do a 500 and it's two minutes per hundred consistently. Most people, their pool pace is faster than open water. Yeah. And so this person asks, is that normal? And is there any way I can get my open water pace to match my faster pool pace? Um, well, it's faster in the pool because you have the push offs from the wall, right? And you're swimming straight. You don't have currents. You don't yeah. have. I mean, there's so many parameters that mm -hmm. are like changing it. So, I mean, 
to comp- you're comparing apples and oranges basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so to answer your questions to have the same pace, I mean, yeah, if you're swimming really fast in the open water and slow, slower in the pool, yeah. I mean, I just don't think they match ever. Um, I, and it is normal. I mean, I have very different times from pool to open water, um, at times like, well, five to 10 seconds. Um, yeah. And I would say that's normal. And the other thing is these watches are not always that accurate. So yeah. again, I was about to say, Angela's <laughs> about to say, ditch your watch. <laughs> I didn't say it, but yes. I mean, the pool use the clock. That's, that's mm-hmm. so consistent. And easy to do. And then open water, if you're going to use the same watch and, you know, get in your GPS, compare swims outside to outside swims. Um, Cause they're just two different things. All right. And our last uh, question, it's, it's from our friend, Allison, who's on our team. And I'm ending with it because it's such a weirdly specific question. It has nothing to do with technique at all. Mm-hmm. She says one of her biggest issues with swimming is she gets annoyed easily with other people frolicking with no pool etiquette. So we're going to end with this one. It really is a barrier for me as it's such an excursion to get to the pool. Like literally it does take people Mm -hmm. two hours to do a 45 minute swim because we know how long it takes. Um, She wants to get her workout done. But when people jump in my lane and they're swimming side stroke or they're hanging around the wall, like how do you deal with pool etiquette? Like what do you say? (laughs) <laughs> what do you say? They'll let you answer first. Um, or I just you... say like, can I swim here? I just go around them because, mm-hmm. but our pool, it people don't like circle swimming. And I, I think know. people are pretty nice at our pool. They kind of yeah. move over. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, they do some weird things in there, but um, I also don't like, I'm not a confrontational person. So I probably wouldn't <laughs> say anything. I would just like you be just right deal next with to that. I would deal with it. But you have swam in many different pools. Way and I'm, more pools. I'm, I, I'm, I, I would say my, my part. Um, I would, I mean, if they're bothering my swim, I would say, look, we're doing a circle swim. And if you, I mean, you need to move out of the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would basically just tell them. Yeah. Um, or the lifeguards. And this is that's how you do life, it. I mean, that's what the lifeguards No, I, I, mean, I know. But I mean, if you're in the lane with someone and they're, they're in your way, you got to explain proper etiquette, you mm-hmm. know? Um, so I explain, you know, if, if, if we're circle swimming and I start tapping their, well, tapping their feet or, I mean, I usually, what I do is I tell them if they, once they get to the wall to kind of move to the side. And once they do that, it's fine. Um, a lot of times I've circle swam with people that are slower than me, for example, and say we're all getting to the wall first. I mean, I just flip turn early and, and don't even go to the wall. And mm-hmm. so I can, I can keep going. Um, so I just kind of play it, play it by ear in terms of people. Um, but a lot of times when you go in and you kind of swim consistently and in rhythm, mm-hmm. they get the point. I mean, yeah, if you're really, you'll see, they'll move over. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I guess, Allison, we got to put on our big girl pants and just be <laughs> like, hey, I mean, you, please stop yeah. wearing your fins and side stroking <laughs> in the middle of the lane because you're hitting me. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. We didn't, we didn't get to all the questions, but uh, we will be back probably in like a month uh, or five weeks with some open water transitioning to open water and, um, and a lot of open water swim tips because we cannot wait to get an open water. Uh, So if you have any other swim questions, anything we missed or anything you want to contribute, please email us at irace like a girl at gmail.com and have a great day. Hey everyone, thanks for listening and we hoped you enjoyed it. You can find us at amywoodsfitness.com and angelanath.com. We'd love to hear from you.